what if I told you that you are talented enough, smart enough, capable enough, lucky enough to realize exactly what you really, really want? Would you believe me? Now, just go into your feeling of that. What do you think about when I say that? Now, for most people who are not doing the work, who are stuck with their limiting beliefs, who have horribly low self-esteem, they're going to come up with a million and one excuses about why that statement doesn't apply to them. If you're one of these people, if you come up with, you don't know my circumstances, Dr. Agio, I'm not attractive enough, I'm not like that person, I'm not like this person, I can't really achieve what I want to achieve, I don't have the resources, I don't have the network. Now, if you're one of those people, that means that you're an excellent candidate for manifestation and the framework and steps that you need for manifestation. Now, I'm going to walk you through what that means exactly. I used to be a skeptic. I didn't understand manifestation. I thought it was woo-woo. I thought it was nonsense. And I was wrong. Manifestation is probably not what you think it is because I didn't know either. Here's what it isn't. And I'm also going to tell you how to apply it to your life and where you can get started with my three-step method. So what you know uh, about manifestation might be entirely incorrect. And because manifestation has gotten very trendy, but a lot of people have misconceptions about what it is. And so there's a lot of confusion. A lot of the people who misunderstand what manifestation is think it's just wishing and hoping. Um, just being grateful and not taking any action. They think it's magic. They think it's quantum physics and they think that you just have to meditate and your life will change. And that's simply not true. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Alkistis Agio. I have been teaching self-help since 2007 here on YouTube. Now, it's not that I have it all figured out, but I have made tremendous progress in realizing my greatest dreams. And I have a lot of love and peace in my life. I have also created a three-step method to help you in manifesting. So manifestation in the simplest of terms is mindset work. It's about getting the results you want through changing your thoughts and your vibration, your energy, your mood, your vibe. It is the practice of bringing things into reality through focused thought and intention. It is doing the work to change how you perceive the world, how you feel about yourself, and how you move through the world in order to dispel limiting beliefs and actually start achieving your goals. And if you ever had a goal that you're struggling to actually achieve because you're struggling to be consistent with doing the things that need to be done in order to get there, you might have gotten the advice of, well, just do the work, you know? Why can't you just think positive? And you think there's something wrong with you because you're not just doing it, you're blocked. You forget it throughout the day. You're basically teaching yourself how to think differently so that you feel differently and act differently. So what manifestation is not? Now, people often view manifestation as a view of 
magical or supernatural intervention, even witchcraft. And while there can be a component of spirituality, it's more about being observant of your thinking, of your body, and shifting and maneuvering it towards the direction you want to help you focus on your goals and the outcomes you want. It's about trusting yourself more. It's about cultivating your self-esteem and confidence. And this will align you with the outcome you want. Another misconception is that manifestation leads to certain results. It doesn't always happen immediately. It's not a question of if, but when, because manifestation does require time and effort and consistency and dedication. And yes, some things may happen instantly or tomorrow, an unexpected email, an unexpected call, an unexpected contact. But in general, manifestation is a daily practice. If you want everything instantly, it will backfire on you. This is not the path for the lazy. So it's not just about wishing and hoping. Now you may say, where do I start? So you can start with your self-concept. Manifestation is about doing the work. And the place you start with is how you perceive and feel about yourself. Now you may feel that this is self-esteem or self-confidence. And it is a lot of that, but it's much more than that. We all tell ourselves stories about our life, about what we're capable of, about what we're good at, what we're not good at. Some of these stories are lovely, like for example, you may say, I'm a good writer or I'm a good speaker, but some of these stories are harmful and we are mean to ourselves sometimes. For example, I'm not worthy. That's a story that so many people have told themselves. I'm not as good as that person, or I'm not as good as the other person. And that's an internalized story that we tell ourselves. And if you have any of these stories, this is self-sabotage. And so, it's about how you feel about yourself, how you perceive yourself, and as a result of that, you are going to behave differently if you think that, oh, I'm just not good at um, finance. I'm not a finance person. I can't get my, my, my budget going. You'll never become good at budgeting because you have this limiting belief, so why bother? But if you learn the fundamentals of manifestation, you can learn to be better at finance and investment and doing your own budget or whatever it is you want to learn. You can get there. You just have to believe that you are capable of it. The reason you have to start with your self-concept and your inner narrative is because once you feel capable, you become capable. So let's imagine some concepts that may be limiting you. At the basic level is your self-esteem. How much do you value yourself? Self-esteem underpins your well-being. If you have low self-esteem, your well-being will suffer. You need to start there. This is part of doing the work. This is it, babe. This is what you gotta do. The next level 
is self-identity and self-image. Self-identity goes back to those stories that you've been telling yourself since a very young age. It's how you define yourself. Who are you at your core? Self-image is how you perceive yourself. So personality traits, physical appearance, it influences your self-confidence and how you present yourself to others. And then finally at the top of this is the self-consistency. It's how you maintain a stable and coherent self-concept across different situations and it helps to create a self of personal integrity, ethos, and authenticity. So now that you understand what it's all about, what do you do to change your self-concept? The way you go about changing your self-concept is by telling yourself different stories, a new story, a new narrative, and you have to affirm yourself every chance you get. And I know, affirmations, there's a reason people work with affirmations. It works. You have to be constantly checking your thinking. Every time you beat yourself up, berate yourself, or catch yourself in fear and angst and anxiety, or a panic attack, or just a negative belief like, oh, I'm such a bad driver, I don't know how to park. Whenever you have a thought that betrays your self-esteem and your self-concept, your self-worth, you need to stop it. Time out. Catch yourself. Self-awareness. And you need to counter it and say, no, 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 that's not 100% true. I believe this about me and I can achieve this and I am becoming a better driver. I am becoming more attractive every day. I am growing in love and beauty and peace. You see what I mean? If you can start cultivating this inner affirmation, it will definitely improve. If you don't work with your self-narratives, it's going to get worse and worse with time. So where you can start is figuring out exactly how you feel about yourself. What are the harmful stories that you've been telling yourself, maybe for your whole life, that are holding you back? Frequent ones might be like, I'm not worthy of love. I don't deserve to make uh, the kind of money I want to make. Or only smart people make this much money. Or I can't create my internet business. It's just too technical. This is just a story that you're telling yourself. Believe me, I know. I studied psychology. I knew nothing about having an, an internet channel but I worked on it, I improved. Or maybe you've told yourself you're not attractive. So maybe you tell yourself, I don't deserve a relationship. I don't deserve for this guy to fall in love with me or this woman to fall in love with me. These are beliefs that you have internalized somewhere along the line. Believe me, I know I had a very difficult adolescence. I had a mustache and lots of pimples, acne, and I had a really bad self-image. And I internalized the negative comments I got from young teenage boys. And even as an adult, I allowed that story to be internalized, even if I was changing on the outside. So there's a lot of old beliefs that we hold about ourselves that are no longer true and things that can also be changed and improved about ourselves. I know you sometimes would feel silly telling yourself a positive affirmation. So what I suggest you do is start getting curious about yourself. 
So if you notice a negative or self-limiting belief pop up, just look at it with curiosity and say, now where did that belief come from? For example, you're looking in the mirror and you don't like what you say. You're looking at yourself and you just got dressed. It's early in the morning and you're like, oh my God, I look disgusting. And then you catch yourself because you're now trying to be aware of these thoughts more than you were previously. And you could be like, who just had that thought? Where does this belief come from? That's curious, that's interesting. Don't judge it, just observe it as if you're looking at yourself from the outside. Really go back to the original thought and say, who's thinking that about myself? That's not true. I can be attractive. I can make myself attractive. Or other people won't find you attractive. You can find exceptions to that and you say, so-and-so finds me attractive. So-and-so has found me attractive. Look at a beautiful picture of yourself and say, there's a beautiful picture of me. Find exceptions. Find why that thought is not true because we're constantly dramatizing, generalizing. Stop that limiting narrative and give it a fact. Give it a true statement and say, that's not true. That is not me. For example, if you're chubby, a little plump, you can find other women who are plump or fat and say, look, that woman is beautiful and attractive. She's proud of herself. I can be too. Or if I want to lose weight, I can. I will find the way to lose weight. I'm loving myself in any shape and form. Even if I'm a little plump, even if I have a tummy or whatever it is you don't like about yourself, just soften it up. Be more gentle and kind to yourself. This is taking care of yourself. This is overlooking yourself. So you become the guardian spirit of yourself, the ever loving guardian spirit of yourself, the ever loving guardian parent of yourself, the ever loving non judgmental coach and mentor of yourself. So become resourceful. Use your imagination to counteract that inner narrative. Find something attractive on yourself. Find the exception. If you can't believe that you can make money, remind yourself of the time in your life when you did make money, that you did make a sale. You have to open up your heart to yourself. I think that so many people just really sabotage themselves. So self-concept work is never finished, not only because you're constantly going to be changing and evolving as you grow and get older, but also because some of the stuff is so ingrained, those old beliefs, that you're going to be fighting against these thoughts for the rest of your life. And it seems horrible, but I wouldn't see it as a fight. I would see it more like self-mentoring and self-coaching. And soon those voices will get quieter and quieter and quieter. And you may have it pop up, but it will be less frequent. So you're going to see this progress, this advance. If you just stay consistent with the work we're doing, with my three-step method that's going to help you so much. And if you want to download my three-step method, just go to my website, alkisthes.net, and you can access it for free, at least level one. So as you start practicing my method, you're going to start feeling better and better about yourself. Now, there's going to be your low days, but you just have to develop those tools, which I offer to you on my online course, how to pull yourself up 
from those lows. We all go through cycles, life is up and down. So you're gonna have the tools to pull you out of those negative moments. Let's go into how you're gonna create the life you want. So as you're doing the self work, your inner work, you're gonna to have to understand that your ultimate goal is to have your thoughts and beliefs aligned with your desire itself, with the outcome you want. So step zero is always going to be self-concept. Aligning your energy with the outcome you want. Step, step one is visualizing what you actually want, what I call the telos, the outcome. In Greek, the word is telos. It's like in a GPS. You have to put the outcome, the address you want to reach. What is the exact outcome you want? And then see that person who you will be. How are you going to be feeling when you have achieved your goal? First of all, you're going to be a more grateful person because you're going to be like, Oh, thank you, universe. I realized what I always wanted to realize. Like I am here living by the beach. I'm like, thank you, universe. I live by the beach every day. I'm so grateful. So one thing you're going to be is grateful because you will have already reached the goal that you want. You're going to feel abundant because in the outcome you want, you're going to have abundance, stability, freedom, security, comfort. So you're going to have to deal today and be secure, comfortable, abundant. Be that person today. Of course, you have these doubts coming in. I can never be a millionaire. I can never have multiple streams of income. You need to deal with that. That's the inner work. That's level one of my method. Doing the inner work with your self-concept, with your energy, and clearing all those fears and doubts. You're also gonna be hit with the obstacles that are gonna to try to prevent you from achieving your goal, right? Like every hero, look at Greek mythology, every hero has to go through the obstacles. That's just how life works. You have obstacles. This is part of the hero's journey. Without obstacles, you're not a hero. You're not, it's like when you're driving, you're gonna have obstacles. You're gonna to have to go through many things, bridges, uh, potholes, um, you know, mountains, all kinds of obstacles. There might be a traffic accident in front of you, traffic, whatever. So whatever your obstacles are, you need to keep observing and doing, feeling who you're going to be when you ultimately achieve your goal. It's like you have a golden thread between now and there. There becomes here. You have to become the person you want to be in the future, here and now. You have to incorporate, embody, align yourself with the person you want to be. And sometimes you have to ignore people's comments towards you. It's like, who do you think you are? Oh, you've become confident all of a sudden. Oh. Who do you think you are that you can start your own business? You can't do that. What makes you think you're going to um, get that guy or that woman? In? You can't get them. You have to learn how to dispel these energy vampires and say, thank you. I know you're trying to help me and protect me and be uh, caring about me. Family will do this very often but I don't need your advice. Thank you. Always be grateful. Be gracious and grateful. You need to align your behavior, in other words, with the person that you desire to become. So become the type of person who is the CEO. Become the type of person who does have 
uh, the business that you want. Become the type of person who does live in the country you want. So in other words, who will you be in the future? Align your energy with that person today. That's all it is, really. It's aligning your energy. And of course, taking the steps to realize your goals. No doubt about that. But you will be doing them in a more peaceful, less anxious way. Now, you're probably going like, isn't that tricking myself, Alkis this? I'm not the CEO right now. I'm not the millionaire right now. You have to absolutely believe that you are capable of achieving that goal. In a way, you have to become, yes, positively delusional. Yeah, you need a little craziness. Like Steve Jobs said, here's to the crazy ones. You have to really believe in the outcome. I felt like that too. Many, many years ago when I started my YouTube channel in 2007, I said, well, that's not possible that I'll have millions of subscribers. And here I am with 1.6 million viewers, soon to be subscribers. You have to really believe in the outcome. You have to change your internal beliefs and how you feel about yourself. You are there here and now. It's about convincing yourself that it is possible and that you can do it. You are capable of doing this. You're not wasting your time. If you invest in your business, if you go out to network, it's already a done deal. It's already happened. So why not be the person I will be in the future? It's not like anything really is going to change. If you're dedicated to what you're doing, you're going to do it because you love it, because you love to do it. In essence, you're not going to change so much as you think, only that you're going to have more integrity and more gratitude. You're going to have aligned yourself completely with that outcome. Just enjoy the journey because when it's happened, you're going to be more in joy. So why not be more joyful here and now? Don't wait for the outcome. Very often, you're sometimes disappointed with the outcome. I have many, you know, VIPs and celebrities who have achieved their goals and they're feeling down. So they have the external thing but they don't have the internal thing. They do drugs, um, they get drunk, and then they hire me as their coach. I mean, so what I'm telling you is that you can be in joy and peace and love and all the things that you want here and now. Do it with love, do it with dedication for the people that you are serving whatever it is. So stop making excuses, do, do the, the inner, inner work, work and, and know to, to deep, deep down, down inside, inside that your, that your goal, goal is already, already achieved. achieved. It's, it's already done. Don't even bother looking at it. Just go along your merry path in love, peace, joy, abundance, gratitude. Know that it's already done. You do have the skill set, you do have the knowledge, you do have the work ethic. Whatever it is that you doubt about yourself and your abilities, you find proof in your life, evidence that you are capable. Go back to your earlier achievements and say to yourself, look, I did this very difficult thing in the past. I achieved a certain goal that I thought was impossible. Use that. Use the resources of the small achievements you've done in the past. Find areas of your life where you have excelled and model that mentality. Understand your capabilities. Ultimately, the important part is that whatever it is you're trying to achieve, you need to find ways 
to feel like you already have it and to behave like you do. I started behaving like a multimillionaire many years ago. Even when I was in the supermarket, I thought, yes, I'm a multimillionaire and I happen to be in the supermarket right now. I'm a multimillionaire and I happen to be walking my dog. I'm a multimillionaire and I happen to be in a cafe with my friends. You have to believe that you're already that. Also, I believe that I'm a great coach, that I have hundreds and thousands of customers. You have to believe that down deep in your soul, that it's already done and that you can do it. I want to talk about gratitude a little more in depth. You have to be grateful for every single thing, even the so-called negative things. You have to be grateful because you know that this obstacle has come to make you stronger. Always feel like the universe has your back. Always feel that every difficult thing, every obstacle is for your improvement and for you to grow to become a better person, okay? So whatever obstacle you have, you have to see that this is just part of the path. This is part of the hero's journey. It's all for my improvement. It's all for my um, enlargement, enlarging my heart. I mean, let me give you an example. My husband passed away after 20 years of a very happy marriage. Okay, this was the man of my life, the man I manifested, the man I always wanted. And after 20 years of marriage, his health gave up on him due to COVID and he died. Now, how was I supposed to overcome this obstacle on my path? I had to keep going and realize that his passing enlarged my heart, enlarged my soul. And I found ways to understand that my husband is now my guardian spirit. I am so grateful that he is watching over me, that he's giving me positive energy. He has brought me into contact with higher realms. So I am actually grateful because he is with me in a better way right now because He's helping me to become more of who I truly am. He has become my spiritual teacher. So you have to make whatever it is work for you. Yes, express gratitude as frequently as you can. It will just become an infectious muscle, a thing that you don't want to stop doing it. Just constant gratitude. Be a practitioner of gratitude because that's how you're going to be when you achieve your goal. So why not start enjoying life and being grateful for now? You're going to feel so much better. Now you are going to experience obstacles, but you will be grateful for them. Yes, I know it's a little psycho. It's a little twisted, but when you have that monomaniacal view that I am grateful for everything. Trust me on this. Be grateful for the blessings that are on the way. <clears throat> One of the most common things that I'm grateful for is a simple thing like I have two arms and two legs and my eyesight. You know, I'm grateful for the basic things, especially when something bad happens. Um, I always remember, do I have my two eyes? Do I have my two arms and legs? I should be grateful. Just for that, don't take it for granted. Don't take anything for granted. I know from my husband's health and how he disappeared within a few months off the physical plane due to bad health. Um, I do not take my health for granted. Do not take anything for granted. That you haven't been in a car accident, that you are not paralyzed, that you have friends, have a roof over your head, 
for the simple things like your warm bed at night. That's right, every time you go to bed, just be grateful that you are in your warm, cuddly bed. It's a mindset shift. Become a maniac of gratitude because that's how you'll be when you've achieved your ultimate goal if everything has gone right. You start focusing on the poor me, poor me, I'm a victim. Forget it, it's, it's not gonna go anywhere. You have to become infinitely grateful to the universe, to your creator, to God, however you wanna call it. It's the quintessential part of manifestation. If you are only focused on what you have to do and the work and the struggle and the, the grind, it's just gonna affect your mood. And if you're just focusing on the negative, like what hasn't gone right, it's gonna just drag you down energetically. You're gonna become a negative person, a bitter person, um, a resentful person, just uh, a very uh, sad human being and bitter. So practicing gratitude is going to feel really uncomfortable in the beginning, almost fake, but when you start doing it, you're not gonna wanna stop. It's addictive. It's addictive, it's infectious, and you start attracting people like that around you too. Sometimes I start crying when I start practicing gratitude. Thank you, thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for all the 1.6 million viewers on YouTube. Thank you for allowing me to do what I love to do. Let's talk about envy now. It's gonna come up because when you're in your game, you're gonna be looking to people who've already achieved the thing you want and you're gonna be watching them achieve their goals or see what they've already been successful at and that you don't have. And you need to turn envy into inspiration. You need to say, if she did it, why can't I do it? I'm just as good at it, I'm just as capable. It may take me a little longer, Look, it's like you're in a car and you're driving to New York City, okay? Now, some people are very close to New York City. You're, uh, you know, outside in New Jersey. And, you know, you have your pace of getting to New York City, all right? You can't compare the, 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 the next lane of traffic. Some people are taking the fast lane. Other people are taking the slow lane, the middle lane. You have your journey, enjoy the ride. Just say to yourself, just because she has it or he has it, it doesn't mean I can. Because she has it, it means I can. And miracles will happen along my way. Coincidences will happen along my way. You don't know what the price they paid to get where they are. You have your journey, your story, there is so much more um, I can tell you about this topic, and I want to encourage you to start the online course, level one, level two, start practicing. I have the tutorial videos. Start making it a habit of coming to these Monday manifestation um, sessions so that you can really get back on your game and improve your performance, improve your mood, and just get that ball rolling. Get into that momentum. You're doing it. You are already manifesting a life and work you love. Just for the fact that you've been here watching this show, um, it's all wonderful. So, I'm going to tune out now and bid good night from Greece to my friends. Thank you for watching.